welcome to part two <laughs> of the Category 5 TV tutorials on uh, how to design a website. Crystal Wells joins us tonight. Hello. I'm Robbie Ferguson. Nice to have you here. Um, so last week we, well you, I was yeah. kind of here, but Super fast. you created the, uh, yeah, the design that you've got there. Yeah. And you make great things happen. Look at that. Very cool. <laughs> So that's you over on, on your Mac. It is. This is me over on Linux. So let's see what we can do here. Krista sent me the PSD file. So here's comp.psd. This is the same file that you're working with, right? Mm-hmm. Exact same file. All right. Let's bring it up in GIMP. Okay. There we go. There's me in the GIMP. There's you in Photoshop. Now, just, just for the viewer's sake, how much does Photoshop cost you? Roughly a thousand dollars esque, right? It's somewhere in that range. You you can get a student discount if you're going to school. Yeah, <laughs> that helps. So you took advantage of that. Okay, so <laughs> with the student discount, how much did it cost? Uh, well, the so the suite, the CS four, CS five is about five hundred. Five hundred bucks. That gets you image ready, Photoshop, Illustrator, oh. Dreamweaver, Flash, Bridge. I said image ready. I meant Illustrator. Image ready is going way back in the <laughs> in design. Yeah, we don't okay. we don't use that anymore. Okay, so that's a, so. It, can you buy just Photoshop? You can. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of times it's worth it just to get the the package. Yeah, it's easier to switch uh, especially back and forth with vector, the proper right? yeah with the proper programs. Okay, I'm gonna bring up the web browser here. We're just gonna go somewhere where we can buy Photoshop. I don't know why I'm curious. I just I just want to know. <laughs> Photoshop. Oh, here we go. Photoshop. I know it's CS5, but let's buy it. Okay, select country. I'm in Canada. Uh, select which store. Should we go with the educational pricing? Let's do that. Might as well. Just because that's going to be the best deal going, right? So this is for students or faculty. Save up to 80%. Well, that sounds great. 80% of what? Shop the student store. Okay, let's see. So we're looking at uh, Adobe Photoshop CS5. Super fast web design <laughs> there, by the way. And of course they've got, it, it's, it's largely because they're using Flash. Why would Adobe use Flash? All right. Okay. Creative Suite, Creative Suite, Creative Suite, Creative Suite. Adobe Photoshop Extended Student and Teacher Edition. Okay, so the cheapest version I can find here is this CS5 Extended Student and Teacher Edition. Just Photoshop. It says from 199. Okay. So US $199. So that's the cheapest <laughs> I can possibly get, right? As well, that's what, there, yeah. that's what it is. So, you're just gonna show off now. No, I'm not showing off. <laughs> no, that's not what this is. No. Oh, that website loaded so fast. <laughs> you invited me just to make fun of Krista. Let make fun of Krista. Show. No, it's not. I'm not. <laughs> when did I say? Oh, look at you didn't have Look to. at Krista. She's well, slow. Implication. I said their website. Okay, here, look. <laughs> Let's just say we're on Windows, okay. Oh. Okay, I'm in English. Wait a minute. But wait, <laughs> I didn't even have to pay. And it wants to give me the full version of the software. Let's go back and see what, what we have here. Okay, go back to gimp.org <laughs> and let's say we want to get it for Mac OS. Oh and look it's also available for Unix. Photoshop doesn't work on Unix. How convenient. <laughs> Mac OS 10. Okay here we go. The GIMP on Mac OS 10. Let's see how much this one costs. Oh I bet it's free. <laughs> You're catching Did on. Did I jump the gun? Was You're that too soon? You're catching on. What's that? Yeah, yeah, I get it. GIMP, just so you know, <laughs> stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. Compatible with Snow Leopard, Leopard, Tiger. Going way back. So 
Let's say we got Snow Leopard. Oh, that looks strikingly similar. A DMG file. Okay. <laughs> you you kind of know what I'm saying, I, right? Okay. I so think I caught on. Unless you want to draw out a picture for me, that might help. I don't want to say that Photoshop... I'll, I'll draw a picture. <laughs> it just might help. The same. putting his skills to use here. There. There's a picture for Krista. <laughs> <laughs> she asked for it. <laughs> okay. I don't want to say that Photoshop and Gimpers are identical. They're not the same product at all. They're not... They're, they're similar in their design. They're similar in what they can do. There's a program called GIMP Shop, which is another version of the GIMP that looks a lot like Photoshop and uses a lot of the same hotkeys. So it's easier for someone such as Krista to migrate over to the free product. Not that I would. But the GIMP is absolutely free. So if you want to get into photo manipulation, if you want to be doing things like we're doing uh, tonight and when we do graphic manipulation on the show, why not use a free piece of software that's available for download at GIMP.org and this is going to allow me, here I am on Linux, okay. looks kind of like Mac OS. This is Linux, it's also free, Ubuntu.com. Ubuntu Linux is a free distribution or a free uh, operating system for your computer and it works on PC so it's cheaper hardware, free operating system versus the Mac. Here's Photoshop. Fair enough. All right. So not the same product, <laughs> but we want to just kind of emphasize that there's a big difference because we're we're saving 200 bucks bare minimum if we were a student. Okay. As so, a student, yeah, that's a really yeah. great deal. But bucks? as a professional, I really like the you know the Photoshop programming and everything. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And it does have its advantages, and I I do tend to use both professionally because there are times when I absolutely need Photoshop. I totally can admit that. She's trying to make me feel better now, that's all. <laughs> I am. I don't ever use Photoshop. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the only time I use Photoshop is when you send me when files. When you're here, yeah. Because yeah. all your crazy Photoshop layer masks yeah, and things. Yeah, that's me. No, I'm just kidding. Going to add more next time. <laughs> okay, so here we are in the GIMP. And what we're going to do is kind of assess how we want to work with this file. Basically, as last week, Krista went through and, and uh, creatively came up with the design and, and um, decided, <coughs> pardon me, and explained how she decides how to build the website. As the person who's going to be slicing it, which may be the same person if you ever do the slicing yourself, um, the person who's slicing needs to have a bit of an idea as to how they want to, to do this. Oh, look at that. That's the Mac. That's Linux. <laughs> okay, so what I mean by that is we've got this gradient background. <coughs> so this is a red that changes shades of red. If you're not too sure, what you can do is you can grab your, and you can follow along with this, Krista, if you like. Okay, in Photoshop. Fo just following. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we should do a split screen. That's embarrassing, maybe. So what I've done is I've grabbed the little Doppler here. It's a color picker tool in uh, GIMP. And uh, if I click on my foreground color, actually click on the Doppler there, and watch this HTML notation there as I click on this red. It is B4CBE5. What I want to do here, I'm going to change layers to the background layer. And now do that again. <coughs> There we go. So A9000, okay? If I click somewhere else, see the number is, that's A9000 as well. <laughs> What's so funny? I'm laughing, just thought of a funny joke from earlier. Okay. So now click down here, it changes to 81, 810,000. That's an HTML reference for the color. So you see that it's actually a, a gradient, there's different colors here, A0000, versus down here is 8,000 or 800,000. So 
what that tells us is that the gradient is not all one color of red. So what we need to first decide is how we're going to work with our background when we're doing this. So what we want to do in Photoshop is maybe zoom in to about 2,000. Percent. Yeah. So. And then go down to the very, very bottom. One of the things that we need to do when we're slicing a website is we need to make sure that things are fluid. If the site becomes taller, we need the gradient not to have a, a cutoff point at the bottom of the gradient. You don't want this thing to look like a square on a white page. You want that gradient to seem to flow. So what you'll do with, at that zoom level is use your Doppler and get that HTML character code, the color code of the very, very bottom. So as close to the lower edge as you can possibly get. Because that's going to be at this zoom level, it's going to be like a very, very big pixel. So that's the 840,000, right? Yep. So if I bring it up in the GIMP, let's see if I get the same thing. So I've got my Doppler tool, color picker. I'm going to zoom in, go down to the very bottom, and grab that bottom color. Because that's where our gradient. Uh, basically ends. And I think I actually got a little closer to the edge because I'm getting 82,000. I think you might have been up just a little bit. But regardless, that's, that's going to be pretty close. So right down at the very, very bottom here, I've selected the color and it's 8,000. That's this really deep red. So the reason we want to do that is now we've got that color in our clipboard. And now if you watch, if I were to zoom out of this now, And if I were to resize this image, the canvas size, which is exactly what's going to happen on the web if you get a page that's super long. Okay. Now, what's going to happen in the background there, once I fill that with this particular color, just to kind of give you an idea. Is that the gradient is not going to look like it breaks off. You can't see a line there where the gradient stopped. If I didn't do it that way, if I didn't pick that proper color, and there was white behind it, you'd have the bottom of the website would basically look like that. So I've got my color. It's 8,000 or 800,000, and that's what we're going to use as our background color when we get into CSS, so the actual coding okay. of the site. But we need to know that off the get-go because we need to actually create the background gradient file. OK, so we are looking at uh, part two of uh, developing a website, and Krista and I are actually slicing up the design that uh, she did last week and basically getting it set up so that we can turn that into an actual functional real website. At this point, it's really just a mock-up. It's just a pretty picture. That's yeah. it. It's something that we would send to a customer and say, here's the look of the website. What do you think? Mm -hmm. That gives us a chance within Photoshop or the GIMP to make changes to the design change the, where the items are positioned or what menu items there are. It's, uh, it's really <coughs> it's just a graphic representation of what the website's going to look like. At this point, we're assuming that the, the client or, or us, if it's our own website, we've said, yeah, this looks great. This mm -hmm. is exactly what we want. Um, so we're going to actually work with that. So looking at my computer here, and Krista's got this up in Photoshop as well. So I'm working in the GIMP. Krista's working in Photoshop. I'm working for free. She's working for thousands. <laughs> okay, so. Let's slip that in. Just throw that in there. Yeah. Sorry. Happy St. Patrick's Day, by the way. <laughs> Two days off. I'm Robbie Ferguson. Okay. <laughs> so with this, we've got the background color. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna jot this down because we are gonna need this next week when we get into actually coding this website. My color is eight thousand. Eight hundred thousand. That's a hexadecimal number that corresponds with the RGB or red, green, blue color that we've chosen there. That's the red. And hexadecimal means uh, it's ready for uh, HTML, for coding for the web, uh, for CSS. So we can set that as our background color, and it's going to match exactly to that. Um, Photoshop tells you if it's a web safe color, which is kind of a cool feature of Photoshop. Do you want to bring up the color Doppler there and, and just tell me if, uh, if it shows? Oh, well so if we you change it to 800,000, and I'll show you what, uh, what it does there. So 800,000. Mm -hmm. And if you look right here at the top, there's a little explanation point. 
and it shows us that that is not actually a web safe color. If you click on it, it's going to change to the a closest. similar color, which is web safe. And that is what? 7F1418. Seven seven okay, so let's see in the GIMP how different that is. Web safe colors are not as big of a problem as it used to be. See, that's, not, that's nowhere close. I guess on the stream you can't really tell that. I can tell that visually. Yeah, it's more of a pink than a red. It really is. So I'm going to stick with 8,000. Typically, when we're creating the mock-up, we might try sticking with ending the gradient on a web safe color. So when we're selecting the colors, we could, if we want to make it easier for the guy who's slicing it. <laughs> Why you would might, you want to do you that? Might do that? In a case like this where it's not web safe, what I might do is I might actually choose a color that is web safe. Okay, and colorize that. That's my background color now. Use a square marquee. Pardon me, and feather that. Let's start with 10 pixels. And go like that. Create a new layer, transparent. Remember, this is a feathered marquee, right? So now, if I fill that, what a feather means is that uh, the, oh, that was my background color, the edge of that uh, marquee is not a perfect square. It's actually got a little bit of a feathering to it, kind of like a blur on the edges without, uh, without actually having to blur it. Sorry, I'm talking and trying to find fill. <laughs> there we go. So now if I put that above, And I can, cr I can set that up in such a way that the I might want more than a 10 feather. I want, let's say, 35. This is just one option. I'm not going to do this in this case because it's such a... The color is, is so far off that we're just going to stick with it. But I want to show you what you can do to fix that edge. sometimes does that to me. So I can move that, see what I've done is I've created another gradient at the bottom which merges the non-web safe color into a web safe color. Nice and clean. So that's a possibility. In this case we're not actually going to do that. We'll pretend that we've got a web safe color and that we or that we don't care or something like that. <laughs> it's all good. The other option in a case like this we've got a non-web safe color at the base Here's a really quick option, and this one's going to surprise you. 800,000. And there's no right or wrong way to, to do this. It's really, you're going to choose every time you do it. But what we need to do is we need to have this clean. We need to have it web safe. Easiest way to do that, create a new layer. First of all, let's, let's canvas size this. We're going to go canvas size. We're going to set it to something absurd that nobody's going to ever have. <laughs> We're going to set it to 15,000 pixels high. So now our image actually looks like that with the website way at the top. If I create a new layer and I fill that layer with my background color, which is the non web safe color, okay? Now what happens is we've got something where it's going to be the perfect color. It's not web safe, but it's okay because it's going to be an image on the background. So now you say, okay, well, that's, uh, what did I say, 15,000 pixels high. Yeah. That's going to be huge. But what we do now, as part of our slicing, and always keep your PDF file, don't overwrite it, is take that, and we're going to go image, canvas size, because this is a vertical-only gradient. There's nothing horizontal that changes. So I'm going to set this to a pixel width of 5 pixels, which is going to actually crop that, and it looks like it disappeared. If I zoom way in, or push 1 to see it, there's my actual gradient. Okay, so it's like that. It starts up there, goes all the way down for 15,000 pixels. It's never going to actually run into anything. So let's save that. Let's throw it on my desktop. I'm going to call this a JPEG. Reason for it is because it doesn't need a transparency. It's just a flat, flat file. We want it to be as small as possible. So we're going to go with a JPEG. So let's go. We're going to give it a, a logical name. I've called it body underscore BG. JPG. Save that in the GIMP. 
choose your quality, 85 is the default, it's fine. And now we've got this file, which is that background color, that background gradient, okay? And it's huge, but if we look at the file size, because it's only five pixels wide, you'll notice it's 7.3K. It's actually very, very small. It keeps small. it down, yeah. yeah. Anything, basically images for web, you want them to be in the sub, you know, if it's a big image, you want to try to keep it down around 50 to 80K, the very, very high end, depending on. But we have, you, you basically use common sense and realize that the bigger the site is, the longer it's going to take to load. And so you don't want it to be over the top huge. So, okay. So you, you can easily do that on the Mac. I could, yes. You could. And, and, that, and that makes sense because now when our website is there, it's not going to, it's not going to over, like it's, there's not going to be a cutoff on that gradient, okay? So that's our first slice. I'm going to reopen that PSD because remember, we, we never overwrite that file. So I've got my first slice. I'm going to create a folder on my desktop here where I'm going to put it. It's going to be my website. I'm going to cut that image, the first slice that we made. I'm going to create a folder, all lowercase, called images. So on my desktop, I've created this folder called website. And I've got a folder in that called images, and I've cut that to my clipboard, that image. There's my first image. Okay. So now, looking at the rest of the site, Krista, we've got the logo, okay? Which, what we'll want to do is we'll want to actually have that as a transparent item. Because we don't want to have to worry about aligning it perfectly with the gradient. We don't want to have a JPEG, because then we've got a flat image with the background color. Like, we wouldn't want that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer that has my logo, which is right there. If I turn it off and on, I can see that the logo disappears. Hit Control A. I'm not sure what your select all is on the Mac. Oh, it's just uh, Command A. Command A. Yeah. So if you is that what I'm so doing? if you select your logo layer, uh, and obviously you have the master files for the logo, and that's fine too. But from this, we're working in high enough resolution. This is why we want to build our mockups in high res. So we don't have to go back and redo the entire mock-up again with high-res images. Mm -hmm. Always do it in high-res. So with a control A, it's selected that logo, and I can go control C or command C probably to copy it to my clipboard. And then in the GIMP, I'm going to go edit, paste as new image, and I've got a perfect transparent version of the logo. Okay? So because it's transparent, I want to save that as a ping which is going to maintain that transparency. I'm going to, again, put that in web site, images, and I'm going to call this, we want to be search engine friendly. So what was it Aspire? Aspire. Logo. Um, it was Aspire Place, was it? Um, yes, Aspire Place. OK, logo.peng. We're giving it a logical name because, one, it's easier for us to find when we need to actually add it to our site, but also, it allows the search engines to index that as the Aspire Place logo. So once we get submitted to search engines, which is going to happen further on in the series, uh, but we need to plan for that. We need to make sure that our site is search engine optimized and ready to be indexed by the by the search engines. Okay. So you've got have you got that file all set up as well on your Mac? You've got a logo. I have a logo. Okay. <laughs> so you you follow along and then I'm gonna try it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, is, is I'm good with winning? I'm you have the logo saved? And I have the logo saved. Okay, perfect. And remember that because it's copied from our mock-up, the dimensions of this logo are exactly as they would be on our mock-up, 162 by 58. Perfect. So now, you see these menu items. These are all fake. Don't get deceived by these. These are not the set menu items. I get this all the time. Do you get this? Where client says, well, I think we need to change about us to about. Oh, all the time. And yeah. you're saying, no, this is just the mock-up. That's not a real menu. That's just, <laughs> we put that there so that you can see what it's going to look like when we put a real menu there. Yeah. We put this lorem ipsum text on the page so that you can see what the text is going to look like. But it's not the real text. You don't need to tell us, you know, said ut page doesn't yeah, make no any sense. no one can read that. <laughs> that's all part of the mock-up. So one of the things we need to do is just get rid of it all. So that's text that we're going to get rid of. That's text that we're going to get rid of. Okay, So we can get rid of all the mock-up stuff that we simply don't need by turning off the layers. Okay, 
So now, and I've already got my logo, so now I end up with something like that. I've got my background, so I'm done with that. Okay. So really, the only elements that we still have left, here I am on the GIMP, and Krista's following along in Photoshop, doing the exact same thing. So now we need to have our different layers here. So this here is predominantly a color. So we'll get to that, but it's going to be a color, essentially, with a little arrow pointing down at the bottom. Uh, so I'm going to turn off my feather because I had that turned on on my select tool from earlier. And I'm going to grab the guide that uh, Krista has set up here with my marquee. It's, you see that the GIMP snaps to those guides. And I'm actually going to... the mock-up doesn't have... things don't have to be exact to the mock-up because I noticed that the guide is just a little bit off from like maybe a one pixel. So that's, that's fine. So now I'm going to select the wood grain layer and I'm going to copy that and then edit paste as new image or in Photoshop file new image and it's going to automatically set your proportion. So now I've got this wood grain which is exactly proportionate to what it is that uh, is going to go at the top of the website. And Krista's following along on Photoshop as well. So she's actually had to paste that into a new image in Photoshop whereas I could just edit paste as new. So I'm going to save that. That's my wood grain for the top. One of the things about wood grain that you should know is that it's got a lot of intricacy to it, so it can, it can end up being a pretty large file. Mm -hmm. Again, there's no transparency necessary here, so we are going to work with a JPEG. So we're going to try with this. I want to see how large the file is going to be if I set it where I would like it to be, which is about 85% uh, quality. So I'm going to call this um, wood grain bg.jpg. Again, I'm saving it in my web design or website slash images. Flatten the image, save it as 85, and uh, let's go. Pardon me, see how that is. How big's the file on your system at 85%? Oh, you're going way down. I have to. She's taking it down to quality three. Well, it's giving a, you 78K at, a, yeah. at only six, yeah. so 60%. Mine turned out at 85% to be only 64.5K. So what you want to try, Krista, is instead of save as, on Photoshop, go file, save for web. Don't even save know for web and devices. Is. Just down oh, a little bit, right okay. there. Yeah. And now it's automatically selecting GIF, so change that to JPEG. And now you'll see that the file size down at the lower left, 76.1. So now grab the quality slider, and you can slide that down right here, top right, and you can actually see how that's going to impact your file size as well as the quality of the output. So that's pretty good. Essentially what you'd want to do is go down as far as you can without completely losing the quality of the file, without losing the detail, because you don't want it to look bad. But at the same time, this is a background image and there's going to be stuff on top of it mm -hmm. that is going to be really what you're looking at. Um, so for me, 64K is too big. So I'm going to save again. I'm going to overwrite. I'm going to bring my quality down to 70. Double click on it, see how I like the quality. It's fantastic. And at this point, it's only 40K. That's a, that's a bit more reasonable, especially considering it's a wood grain. How are you doing over there in for Photoshop? Oh, we're good. 41K for me. And the quality is 70% quality the wood grain is pretty crystal clear. And how, f how large is the file size? Uh, I believe it was 33. 33? I could keep going. I'm at 70%. Oh, 37. 37? Okay, so we're pretty close. I'm 41. But I've got 70% quality. How low do you have to go? Uh, I think mine was like 40%. Mine okay. was pretty low. Right, all right. So now I've got that file ready to go. And uh, that's going to be our background for the top area. So we can close that out, go back to our mock-up, and I don't need that wood grain anymore. One of the things i, I got to do is i got to get these cool uh, Polaroids that Krista's created. So we're going to get rid of all this stuff, because that's all just Im uh, colors. These are just colors. The white stuff, we're going to use a div. We're not going to use an image. 
and I'm going to go Control A. And this time it's a little bit different. I've got the Krista, we'll just get rid of that blue area as well, because that we're going to use a, a div uh, as well as that. So here I am in the GIMP. There's Krista in Photoshop. Uh, Control A or Command A to copy all, uh, select all. And this time I'm not going to go copy because that's only going to copy the selected layer, which is only the picture. I want to get everything. So I'm going to copy visible or copy merged in Photoshop, I suppose. So now that I've got that in my clipboard, Krista's got that in her clipboard. Let's paste it as a new image. Again, I'm going to go edit, paste as new. Krista's going to create a, a new image and then paste it onto that canvas. Oh, and we didn't get a merged clipboard. So go back to your, your master file there and make sure when you copy, go edit, copy merged. There you go. So now create a new file again. It won't be that one because that one's got the wrong dimensions. Is it still just giving you the... Yeah, that's that all it's doing. Okay, go back to your... So uh, now I think what's happening... Oh, okay, because you're, you've are you got a marquee around just that image. If you do a control A, now you've got... Oh, you just want the whole board. Yes, oh, okay. she would just had the wrong uh, marquee there. So it was copying the merge, but... Okay, so now paste that into a new, new image. There we go. Okay, so now again, this has got to be a ping, right? Yours is coming up as... It's got a white background, so you need to get rid of that white background. There you go. And then export that as a ping, which is going to be a larger file because it's got that transparency. Here I am in the GIMP, and you'll notice that I also got a bunch of space over here. So in the GIMP, I can just go right-click, Image, Auto Crop Image, and it automatically sucks in the sides. That's one thing that Photoshop is lacking that uh, the GIMP is totally awesome at. I'm going to save that image, and we're going to call this the... Polaroids. Polaroids. No breaching of copyrights intended. <laughs> or registered trademarks. Okay, polaroids.ping. Reason we go with ping again is because this has got a transparency. So we need to be able to put this on top of the rest of our website so that what's behind it can actually shine through. Okay, so you're at that point in uh, Photoshop as well. Yep. I'm going to save it with a compression level of 9 in the GIMP. Ping being a lossless format, it's going to be very high quality even at high compression. There's my ping. And uh, it's it's quite large. That's showing me as 167.7K. How are you looking? Uh, we are 299. 299. So mine's about half the size of yours. but. They're both too big for internet. So next week we're going to come back to that. We're going to compress down that uh, that Polaroids.ping file uh, on both. Well, if you're if you're here, we can look at it on the Mac. If you're not, then we'll definitely look at it uh, <laughs> uh, on Linux as well. But you can kind of get an imp an impression for how we're able to do a lot of the same things mm -hmm. between Photoshop, the commercial software, and the GIMP on that, uh, which is free on a free operating system, which is Ubuntu. Do you get the sense that I'm plugging <laughs> the fact that free is actually That's really good these days? It's not like 10 years ago where free meant you're sacrificing quality and, and getting you know a knockoff product. And now, these days, Got it. thanks to community, Got it's, it. it's a fantastic <laughs> thing. So we're going to be uh, looking at uh, actually taking those slices because we've actually sliced up that whole website now. There's our, there's our actual mock-up as a sliced website. That's it. That's it. We've got our logo. Right, which is a transparent ping on a white background it's being displayed, so we can't really see it because it's white text. We've got our background image, which is that thing there. That's going to be the gradient. We've got the Polaroids, which we're going to shrink down next week. And we've got that guy right there, our wood grain. So those are really the only images that we need to get started with the website to make it look like your mock-up. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be using CSS. Uh, as well as HTML and PHP in order to actually turn that into a real functional working website along with some cool little JavaScripts and anything else we need to do to make that work. Cool. This is Category 5 Technology TV and you'll find us online www.category5.tv